give you glory. We give you all praise and honor. For this is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome your presence. We welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst today. Father God, we pray to touch all of our viewers today. Minister to them, God, by the power of your Holy Ghost. Let the yokes, the chains, and the fetters be broken off the lives of your people. And let liberty come, freedom come, healing come, deliverance come. Salvation is here in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A pleasant good morning and greetings in the name of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is the Lord's Day. The day in which we celebrate His glorious resurrection. The Bible says it is not possible that the graves could have hold our God down. Jesus Christ was the one that was dead and behold he's alive and alive forever. We'd like to share from the word of God with you today from the book of Mark's gospel chapter 5 and verse 25 and it says now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude strong in you, and you ask, or you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. May God add the richest blessing to the reading, the hearing, the preaching, the ministering, of his most holy and precious word. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A lot of us are familiar with this incident that occurred in the life of Jesus when he walked the face of the earth. It was historically recorded as well by a historian by the name of Josephus. And he went on to give the name of this woman as Veronica. Veronica had found herself in a very tough position. She was sick and afflicted with a hemorrhage of blood for 12 long years. The word of God says she suffered, not just physically, but she also suffered mentally, emotionally. She suffered a lot of abuse from many doctors and physicians. And whilst we know there are a lot of good doctors out there, there are some doctors who exploit their patients. And even though they can treat their patients in one visit or two visits, they prolong the time period because of the love of money. This woman was not just suffering at the hand of the physicians, but she was also suffering psychologically. Because to be hemorrhaging as a woman in Bible times meant 
that he was ceremonially unclean. It was not just being sick, but it was a shameful disease. She was not allowed in the temple. As a matter of fact, she was not even allowed among people in crowds because of her condition. This probably was no fault of her. But the word of God tells us that Satan is the afflictor. He has come to kill, he has come to steal, and he has come to destroy. But thank God for Jesus. He said, I am come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. In the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38 it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And this woman, she came to her wit's end. She probably had suffered near death experiences on many occasions. She was shamed, she was embarrassed. Even under the law, if you had a hemorrhage, that was a cause for a divorce. So she faced rejection probably from her husband, from her family. She walked a very long depart. And even though history showed that she was well off and she lived in Caesarea Philippi, she had spent all that she had. And instead of getting better, there was no improvement. She rather grew worse and worse. Maybe you are like this woman today. And you've tried everything. You don't know where to turn. You have been suffering for years upon years upon years with no relief. Probably you have spent all your earnings and all your savings. Maybe you have gone to the witch doctors and, and they did all sorts of ceremonies around you. You've gone to the physicians. You've You've traveled in and out of the country seeking for medical assistance, but there yet seemed to be no help. I want you to know that there's hope in Jesus. There's help in Christ. Amen. This woman eventually she heard about Jesus. And I want to ask you, have you heard about Jesus? She heard that he was healing the sick, raising the dead. Casting demons out of people, people who are in hopeless conditions were being helped because wherever he went, he was doing good and he was healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is not dead, but he's alive. Amen. Hebrews 13 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did in the past. He's still doing today. He's the God of the impossible. He's a God of miracles, signs and wonders. When the doctor said, we have done all that we can to help you and there's no hope for you again. Jesus said, I am able. Amen. With men, this thing might be impossible, but thank God, our oh God is not like a man. The word of God says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. There's no disease that our God cannot cure. Jesus was anointed by the Holy Ghost to heal the broken heart. There's nothing broken that he cannot fix. He can fix a broken body, a broken home, a broken marriage. He specializes in mending people's life putting them back on their feet, giving them life for death, giving them blessing for curse. This is the kind of Jesus that I'm talking about. Have you heard that he loves you? Have you heard that he cares about you? He doesn't reject you because you are suffering and because you are hurting or because you are in a low social class or, or maybe you are suffering financially and people look down at you because they see you as a nobody. Let me tell you, in the eyes of Jesus, you are very important Amen. and he wants to do something about your situation today. He wants to turn the, the, the situation around for you. 
He want to put a spring in your step, a smile in your face. He wants to give you a cure because he cares about you more than anything else in this world. You were made in his image and in his likeness. And when men reject you, when society throw you aside, Jesus Christ will pick you up. He will spin you around and he will plant your feet on solid ground. Hallelujah! Amen. That's the kind of God that we serve. When you are in a situation of impossibilities, that is when God wants to start to intervene. When you've tried everything and you've come to the end of yourself and everything else failed, it is time to try Jesus. It is time to give Jesus a chance in your life. You cannot save yourself. Nobody can save you. There's only one Savior and his name is Jesus. Amen. This woman miracle began when she heard. When she heard about Jesus. She heard that he was healing the sick. She heard that she, he was raising the dead. She heard he was casting demons out. She heard he was turning people's life around and giving them miracles. Romans 10 verse 17 says, So that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, one thing I love about this woman, she was not a quitter. In this world, if you want to win, you can't be a quitter because quitter never wins and winners never quit. Even though man had said, this is the end. There's no way out of your situation. When she heard, faith came. And you have to be important what you are hearing. You can't be listening to all the news that is being pushed uh, into our faces from the media today and have strong faith in God. Sometimes you have to turn your back on the evil report and you have to believe the report of God as Isaiah said in Isaiah 53 verse 1, who would believe our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? If God revealed himself to you, then you would believe his report. You would believe his word. You would believe what he said. And the Bible says she heard about Jesus. Hope ignited. She began to say something. That's the next step to putting your faith into action is to begin to speak what you believe. Amen. She said, if I may but just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Faith is positive. Faith knows that there is a way out, that there's a miracle in store with your name written in it. Hope know that and faith knows that this is not your end. You are just here temporary. You are coming out of this. You are going to be healed. You are going to be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. She said, the number one way that you put your faith into action is by speaking the word. Nothing pleases God more than faith. God loves to see faith in the lives of his children. He loves to see us exercising our faith. And Romans 10 chapter, uh, Romans 10 verse 8 says, But what Satan, the word is near you, even in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith. And then verse 10 says, For with the heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made, Unto salvation. How are you saved? By believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. This woman said, All I need to do is to just touch, touch the hem of his garment. I don't need to touch his whole garment, but just the hem of it. Now remember, she was supposed not to be a mouth crowd because she was considered unclean. But the Bible says she came up behind him. She tried to be a uh, secret and silent as to how she will approach him. She didn't want to be noticed. She came behind him in the crowd. 
and she sneaked up and she touched the hem of his garment. She acted upon what she believed and immediately she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She felt the power of God flow through her. Let me tell you, when you hear the word of God and you confess with your mouth the word of God and you begin to act upon your faith, you are a candidate for a miracle. But Jesus knew that somebody had touched him. So he asked his disciples who touched me by the word of knowledge. He knew that somebody had touched him with a touch of faith. The disciples, they were wondering what kind of question was the Lord asking. This did not seem like a logical question because there was a crowd, a crowd of people thronging around Jesus, pressing on on him on every side. There were some of them probably who were trying to pose up next to Jesus, waiting for lightning to flash and God to take a selfie. There were others who were trying to touch his garment to see what kind of clothes he was wearing and, and what brand it was. They probably would have gotten the same brand, so they would have been like a Jesus freak. So people were touching Jesus from every angle, from on every side, for all different kinds of reasons. But this woman, she made a touch of faith. God is not impressed, you know, by the trends of the world today. He's not impressed even by our crime. He's not impressed by the, the things that men do in themselves. But one thing that impresses God is our faith. When the Lord see our faith, His power will be released. His presence will be released. Miracles will be released. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And Jesus knew that this was no ordinary touch. This was a touch of faith. This was a touch of expectation. This woman touched Jesus purposely. She had a goal in her mind. She didn't come there to play games and waste time. No, she came there with a purpose, with an intention that when she touches him, she will be healed. And my God, she was not disappointed. Every time you put your faith to the test, God will see that you reap the reward because he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In the book of Jeremiah, he says, you will search for me and you will seek for me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. This woman was accustomed to giving all. She gave her all to the physicians in terms of money. She tried the best. She did all that she can and eventually she poured her all out to Jesus. God sees your sacrifice. He sees your faith. Jesus looked at woman. He saw the woman. She was fearful. She was trembling because she knew what she had done. She thought probably she did something wrong. But then she fell before him. She prostrated herself and told him all the truth. There's nothing that impresses God like your faith and your worship. God sees your humility. He sees how you humble yourself and you prostrate yourself before him and you confess to him. You tell him all your heart. You pour out your soul to him. As a matter of fact, he knows your innermost thoughts. And then Jesus said these words to her. He said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. God is not mad at you when you exercise your faith. As a matter of fact, he's happy. And he's impressed. He's blessed to see someone exercising their faith because God doesn't want us to be sick. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. The first thing that God wants is that you be saved from your sin. Then he wants you to be healed of your disease. 
Then he wants you to be protected from all plagues and all afflictions and calamity. He wants you to be ready for his soon return. But he's touched, the Bible says, by the feelings of our infirmities. Everything that concerns us is important to him. Our children is important to him. Our job is important to him. Our health is important to him. Because he cares about us so much. He's concerned about everything. And he has given us all that we need. The word of God tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4 and verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline your air unto my saying. Let them not de depart from your heart, but keep them in the midst of your heart. For their life unto those that find it and health to all their flesh. One translation said, it is medicine to all your flesh. God has sent his word to heal us. He sent his word to heal them, the Bible says. And the word of God is Jesus. The word of God is still healing today. That word can reach where the doctors cannot reach. It can touch where the medication cannot touch. For Hebrews 4 and 12 says that the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to cut, pierce, to divide asunder soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It's a discern of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God is like a fire that will burn away all the infirmities, all the diseases, all the weakness, all the sickness in our system. It will bring life, it will bring healing, it will bring health. There's nothing on the face of the earth that is more powerful than God's word. The armies of the world with all their tanks and bombs and military might is nothing compared to God's word. God's word is the healing ointment, the balm of Gilead. Once you apply the word of God to your circumstance, to your situation, you are going to see results once you, you put faith. The Bible says the children of Israel they did not profit anything from the Bible, from God's word, because they did not mix faith with the word. The word has to be mixed with faith. And the word of God says faith works by love. If there's any unforgiveness in your life, release it to God. If there's any bitterness, any resentment, any hatred, any malice, get rid of these things because these things will hinder your faith. You may have faith but you said it's not working. You have to check to see if you're walking in love. And if you're in Christ, his love is flowing in you and through you. And you will get miracles because God is still working today. Amen. Even though COVID is a wrong, God is greater than COVID-19. He's greater than all infection. He's greater than every disease and every sickness. This woman's disease seemed to be incurable. The physicians couldn't help her. She had reached her wit's end. Her back was against the wall. She had tried everything and everything had failed. Eventually she tried Jesus and Jesus did not disappoint her. There's a miracle that is called the greatest miracle. And it's the healing of your eternal soul. God wants to heal your body. He wants to save your family. He wants to prosper you and bless you. But most of all, He wants to save you. The greatest thing is to know that your sins are forgiven. That your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That if you should die, on this pilgrim's journey that heaven is your home. Today I want to encourage you to repent of your sins, to tell the Lord you're sorry for all the wrong things that you have done. Humble yourself, go before him, go naked. Let him see you as you really are. Because a lot of people live a lie, but at death you have to face the truth. 
One day when you stand before God, the truth will be before you and you cannot be evaded. So why not get on your knees now? Why not get and bow before him now and confess and ask him to forgive you, to wash you in his blood? He will forgive you. For he said, come now, let us reason together. Even though your sins is like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Or as crimson, it shall be like wool. God wants to forgive us. He wants to cleanse us. He wants to give us the greatest miracle. And that is the salvation of our soul. All you have to do is to say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry. Have mercy upon me, O God. I repent of all my sins. Wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Save me. And if you are sick, come in faith. Because he said that he himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases. 1 Peter 2.24 Who bore our sins in his own body on the tree. And we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you will heal. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for all those that are sick that are viewing today. We take authority in the name of Jesus over the spirit of affliction, over every spirit of infirmity. We curse every disease and we command it to, to die, to dry up, to disappear from your system. God, we ask you to touch your people. Let your miracle working power flow. Oh God, through their body, healing them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. There's no distance in prayer. And your word says, God, by his stripes, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. And so we claim our healing today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to praise the Lord. Begin to give thanks and worship unto him. For he is your healer. He is your miracle worker. He is your burden bearer. He will never disappoint you. He will never fail you. For he said, I will be with you even unto the end. Hallelujah. That's what we say. You are here. Moving in our midst. And while we are believing that God is here in our midst, at our home today, I want you to believe and know that he is there. In your midst as well. Hallelujah.
realm of fiction and be set free in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He's moving in your midst right now. He's moving on your behalf. Reach out and touch him. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for viewing today. We say God bless you and your family. Continue to serve Jesus. Hopefully, church is going to be open soon. And we're looking forward to seeing.